demolition is a design mistake. If construction does not perform properly, that means that we need to go and look into the design table where mistakes were made. My name is Momoyo Kaijima. My role is uh, uh, making a course with uh, Catherine De Wolf. I'm a professor at ETH Zurich. I work on circular engineering for architecture. So welcome. The course is about bringing together two worlds that are too often distinct. So we often talk about sustainability, circularity, and then digitalization. But we don't use digitalization for circularity. And that's what this course is about. We'll do it in a very hands-on way here, because you're going to build with your own hands a structure with reused materials from the Huber pavilions that were disassembled. The building sector consumes the most material globally of any industry. And without the built environment, we wouldn't have society as we know it. But to keep sustaining society as we know it, we can't keep taking materials and throwing them away. Circular construction for us is twofold. Um, we think of uh, design as the major tool in circular construction, so basically making sure that future generations are able to dismantle uh, buildings uh, in such a way that there is no waste produced. And on the other hand, we define circular construction already as looking, seeking, finding existing building materials and building elements that incorporate uh, into our designs. So not only looking to the future, but already making sure that we are using the stuff that is available today. I also think that there is a general prejudice for the new. And so educating people to realize that things that are made out of old things are actually sometimes more appealing and more suitable. That paradigm changed, that shifted, and therefore the teaching and the way how we teach and the methods we teach uh, need to shift as well. For us, it's évidemment essential. It's a work of sensibilization, to plant the seeds so that the future future generation of constructors and constructors can integrate these challenges, that they become a habit, I would say, quasi normal for them and them. The construction site and the construction process is anyway very complex, but this adds another really, really big layer of complexity. For computation designers, it's uh, our job to design these new tools that are needed to deal with the complexity that comes with circularity. Digital technologies are needed within construction. It is, I think, a challenge, but we will not be able to do without digital solutions. That we have data that is available from early planning phase up until the very end. Digitalization is key if we want to keep the materials at their highest value possible because we need traceability to understand where have they been, what tests have they already been put through. In general, it's useful for modeling. So when you're trying to assemble existing components into a new building, of course you want to see what those components are, how they can fit together, what you need to do to put them together with some new materials and also in evaluating those existing materials to find out whether or not they're suitable. What we need to think is how do we want to use robots in any scenario, but let's talk about construction specifically, because they can produce things faster, safer and more accurately. And at that point, we need to think, what are humans better equipped for and what are robots better equipped for? And maybe build the machines in that way to have really this human-robot interaction. No, it doesn't have like jumping, like the animal. OK, then you can just go forward over there.
地球環境のことを考えながら材料の資源化を、まあ、再利用を前提にすることは新しいデザインが生まれる可能性だと思っています。私は、この30年の売買börse を作るのに、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、Und ich habe auch nie realisiert vorher, wie gut die Bauqualität ist. Und das hat mich dazu geführt, dass die Bauteile ein längeres Leben verdient haben. Für mich, in fait, was sehr interessant ist mit dem Reemploi, ist, dass, wenn wir das Ingredient in eine Equation bringen, es obliegt, alles zu überdenken. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefühlt, wie ich es vorher The key to how we innovate ist, dass wir einen holistischen Ansatz nehmen. Was tun wir letztendlich und wie können wir es unterstützen? Can we enable that we create value for people? And people will not uh, change completely their habits or, or, let's say, give up on things that they like, whether it is transport, whether it is uh, a nice house, which is why developing new ways of getting the same service are so fundamental. I'm going to try to find ways that building in a more ecological, sustainable way is cheaper, so that it's just a smart thing to do. A bold move would be to say that you have to justify why you're using new materials when you make a new building. Now it's kind of, I think, the opposite, that you have to kind of justify why would you use reuse materials. Um, so we could turn it around. This building stands around a saying, and the saying goes, steady dripping wears away the rock. Sirkubi demonstrates the power of persistence, the constant effort of water trickling down the ropes onto the rock gradually makes an impact. Just as droplets can reshape a rock, study and research can ultimately reshape knowledge towards a more circular future. This was a class that was a combination of students from different departments. We also had students from the computer science department, from the material science department. And so we all collaborated together because that shows that you can be really creative when you work together. And I hope uh, this pavilion uh, would be the great start for movement of reuse design for all. I think we have to, as, as building professionals, we have to find a way of articulating a vision so that uh, citizens feel that that should be the way we build. And I'm not sure we have really done that. <laughs>